Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach here in paradise. And today I thought it'd be really good to have a guest on who can tell us all about how to properly handle his M16. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Lately I've been reading, trying to read, trying to understand. I've had different volumes of books trying to help me understand. I've been reading Dante's Divine Comedy. And I'm only sharing that with you so you think that I'm kind of smart. But the Divine Comedy starts with his seven circles of hell and then purgatory. <clears throat> and now we're in heaven. We're in paradise. Dante Alighieri's um, uh, poem called Paradise. And I waited and waited and waited, and I don't see anything about surfing in there. I don't see anything about palm trees and rainbows and uh and uh, the tropical paradise of Hawaii. So I'm thinking probably maybe when it gets to the highest level of heaven, that's where you'll find Hawaii. But uh, anyway, we're coming to you today from Waikiki Beach, from my home in Hawaii. And we have a guest today who's also from Hawaii. Uh, his, his, his name is Jason Goodman, and he's first uh, for Sergeant First Class in the Army. Aloha, Jason. Hey, aloha, Bear. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, if you're not watching this on on, on uh on the YouTube version, he just threw us the shaka. What's the shaka that you just threw at me on the video? What's the shaka? Yeah, what's the shaka? Well, I mean, yeah, the stories I've heard is some guy, uh, Sugar Mill, on uh, where's that Kaloa, Kaloa Ranch area, lost his fingers in some uh, his, his fingers. The, mid, like the middle fingers. So, the middle fingers, and they put it into a sugar press or something and lost them. And he used to wave a lot of people, so then he started waving like this. So what is that? So, way, so we'll describe way. it to people what that is. It's the shaka yeah. is with your thumb and your and your little finger extended in your yes. and your other fingers together, kind of like if you're answering fake fake answering an old yeah. kind of telephone. And of course, the shaka is the hang loose sign here here in Waikiki Beach. There's something else very unique about Jason Goodman that uh, I cannot do. I've tried to do it. I'm not gifted enough to do it, but. And we won't ask you to do it because it'll ruin your voice, but it's the famous chi Hu of Hawaii. Uh, Explain what that is. When we were with you the other day, the Pearl Harbor Parade was coming by, and uh, we were waiting for it. Your whole ohana was down there with you right by our condo in Waikiki. And I asked yeah. if you could do it, and tell, tell them what the chi Hu is. I mean, I'm not obviously – we know I'm not from Hawaii, but, uh, you know, originally. I think the chi Hu – the only way I can describe it is it's something where you can be in a hotel, you can be in a restaurant, anywhere, and you do it, and you'll get responses. Even from inside your hotel room, you will hear a faint. Hey, okay, somewhere. so let me. Okay, so Chi Hu is, imagine going Chi Hu as loud yeah. as you can to where your voice almost gets ripped out of your voice box, gets ripped out of your throat. And in Waikiki or in Hawaii, when you do that Chi Hu, you may hear someone else respond to Chi Hu three blocks away. And then someone yes. else respond from it from the ocean. And someone else from, from over there, uh, other places. And I tell you what, during the whole COVID situation here in Waikiki, we heard that a lot. People just calling out to each other from their from their mm -hmm. from their homes, just letting them know I'm here. It's kind of like the loons of the Midwest or the, or the wolves, you know, in the in uh, in uh, in the in the Montana area or the coyotes of California. Or in, they, yeah, it's, in the it's South. a way of it's calling like, out. Yeah, it's like yeehaw. Only it's a lot louder. And it ruins your vocal cords a lot more. You hear it a lot at the Hawaii football games too. So, so you know, Bear, I could do it if you want me to. It won't hurt my voice. Okay, let's try it. Go ahead. Let's hit, let's hear the chi hu. Wait, a minute. everybody, okay. everybody listening, get your hands on the volume control because you may need to adjust this. Okay. Yeah. Turn I'm going to take my bit. headset off. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. I got to tell you guys something that was so loud that it didn't register our, our our processor muffled it so you could just imagine what it sounded like that uh sergeant first class jason goodman uh one of our wonderful uh military uh people here in hawaii so what what was this that you said you learned a, a lesson from your uh from your sergeant i think it was about how to handle your 
your M16. I mean, you know, you're a sergeant yourself. You know how to lead men and, and, and challenge them and, and cause them to become better men and better soldiers. So how is it that how, – what is the special care and handling that you uh, show your weapon when you first join? Well, when, when you're in the – yeah, we're in, in, the, in the field, doing field you know, training or whatever, and you have your M16 at the time. That's what it was called, and now they're M4s, and, you know. But uh, I had you have your M16. It is with you all the time. It is a part of your body, much like our phones today, which is not good. But <laughs> in this case, it's good because you get to defend yourself, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, you always have it. If you go to the shower, it is right next to you in the shower. It gets wet, and you wa- you dry it off afterwards. You put it in plastic if you need to. That's really it's something. Always with you. If you wow. sleep with it, you sleep with it. So. What do you mean you sleep in with fact, it? You, actually, uh, you have your arm. You, yeah. Are you always touching it when you sleep? Well. So side story, I just thought of in basic training, in advanced training, it was, I, was, I was infantry, we had to go sleep in the field. And the drill sergeant said, you know, sleep with your weapon. You know, he wasn't a Christian, so he said, sleep with it like you sleep with your girl, you know, um, or next to your mom if you were little, you know, that kind of. Yeah. And so he said, bury it, sleep with it. I'm going to try and take it from you. And so people lost their weapons and they, they woke up with uh, red marks across their forehead and their neck and markers. Wow. Yeah. I remember at two or three in the morning, it came in my tent. I buried it in the ground in plastic under me about a foot down and slept on top of it. And I felt him kind of push me over and I grabbed him and I said, hey, don't take my weapon. And he's like, good job, private. And he left me alone. My friends woke up like, oh, man, I got a red mark on my head. And his well, weapon's gone. And then you have to do push-ups until you cry. Is there paperwork um, involved? There might be. There might be paperwork. <laughs> what about this thing about the shower? Are you, uh, you, oh, uh, you, you gonna fess up? You gonna fess up or not? What happened with your, I, I your will, weapon? I'll fess up. So we were in the field. I was infantry at the time and had to go take showers. And we all, you can stack your weapons together if you want. It's a certain way you stack them. And somebody watches them. Guard, actually. You go shower. You do your thing. You get your pits because you're nasty. And then we all left and we went back to our tanks because we were a mechanized unit. And I was one of the tank drivers as a specialist E4. I I want to do that. I want to do that. My wife wants to do that, actually. Yeah. (laughs) That or a John Deere combine. (laughs) Yeah. My training consisted of sitting in front of a forest of trees. And the sergeant said, okay, Private Goodman, go. I'm like, what do you mean go? He's like, go. So I just pushed it forward the levers and we knocked down like 20, 30 trees. It was a blast. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I we all went back and did our thing, and then I was eating, and I somebody said, hey, where's your weapon? I'm like, oh. yeah, I left it at the shower. And so, so? I had to go find my platoon sergeant, who is the rank I am now, 26 years later, and uh, tell him, uh, hey, sergeant. I didn't say hey. I said, sergeant, private good reporting. He's like, what the heck do you want? Expletive, expletive, and... I had to tell him I uh, left my weapon, and I've never been more yelled at in my life. Uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, knife hand is what we That's call it. That's what happened army. to your ears. They got folded exactly. way back, and your hair spot. your hair went straight backwards. It did. It did. <laughs> your eyebrows. So we were, had to go get he it. Has, he, if you he could see him, you guys, he has no eyebrows, no eyelashes. <laughs> No eyebrows. I mean, what do you do with somebody that has no eyebrows? Like, what's wrong with that person? You know? no, so, so, and what did you? What was your? What was your punishment for that? Other than getting yelled at? So the, yeah, getting yelled at the whole way there in the jeep and all the way back, and he made me tie a four foot rope to my waist and the other end to my weapon, but then he made me get in and out of the tank like a hundred times. So you have to like lift it up and then hoist yourself up, and it falls yeah. back down in the hole, and it was a big mess. It was so yeah, you'll never forget that. I remember my son. I Jer- never forgot my weapon again. My son Jeremiah was on his first big uh, surf trip with a with a surf sponsor down into Mexico, and he knew the banditos would come right and take their surfboard. So he leashed his surfboard to his leg uh, and slept in the tent. But he left the surfboard outside the tent. So in the morning when he came and he's and he's and he's there like this is his big event, surf photographers and all that. He left his wetsuit out there too. When he got up, his wetsuit was gone, and the leash had been been cut. So, that's kind of the way we need to be tethered to the Lord, don't you think? We need to. We our, yeah. the Bible is our weapon. Uh, the sacraments is our weapon. The rosary is our weapon. Uh, tell us what. Tell us uh, what lessons we can learn from from what you learned and apply it to our spiritual life. 
Well, yeah, like, like you said, I think we need our Bible is our the double edged sword, right? It says, mm. uh, I forget where it's at right now, but somewhere in the Bible, though. Sword that, <laughs> somewhere in the Bible, I think it's around Ephesians. Okay, but it says that the 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 you know the word is a double edged sword, able to penetrate both uh, uh, bone and marrow to get to the heart. And I'm I'm paraphrasing horribly, but I think we need to keep our Bible close to us and the Catechism. And mm. we have two weapons, actually. We have several, but I think the main weapons are the Bible and the Catechism. Um, they beautifully mold together, and we need to keep those close, much like my leash was to my weapon. Um, as well as one of those rosaries, the, uh, the, the warrior, really big... The, well, we have the yes. warrior rosary from uh, Tom Sullivan gave me my first one, and I've, we have them on our website, the warrior rosary. It's, it's my weapon of yeah. choice. I, I don't have it here anymore, but I used to always keep my black belt... Uh, hung up, and then uh, my rosary hung over my black belt, so people would know if they walk in my house, they're gonna. There's not a victim waiting for them. There's a warrior waiting for them. But my, I think my wife didn't like my decoration when we got married. She, she moved it away. But yeah, the the weapon, the 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 uh, the the weapon of choice uh, for us is the scriptures. Uh, praise is a, is a powerful w- weapon. Uh, worship. The, the children of Israel used to go into uh, into battle with the choir first. This is Bear Wozniak. We're talking with my friend uh, Sar- Sergeant First Class Jason Goodman. Who's what's the name of your podcast, Jason? Talking with a good man. Talking with a good man uh, here in, here in Hawaii. This is Bear Wozniak. We'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up, Spitting and Whittling. A lad back in the 1950s, I would sit with my kin working their rocking chairs on the back porch of the old Markham home. It was a two-story affair having a large dining room where the grandfather clock chimed in dinner and other affairs. It was built back in the 1870s after my great-uncles, grandpappy and great-grandpappy came across the Oregon Trail to strike it rich in the booming and sometimes bust salmon fishing industry. The old place was blown off its foundation during the Columbus Day storm of 1962. Hooey, that was one serious southwester with gusts of over 100 miles per hour and sustained winds of 80 to 90 miles per hour. Well, I digress, but digressing is a fine place to go now and then. Anywho, great Uncle Hiram and Joseph would sit on the back porch of the old place spitting and whittling tobacco juice, that is, telling their stories after Sunday church dinner. And that's when most of the spitting and whittling was done. It was a for sure event to happen every week. Having a good stick or a piece of driftwood and carving knife was required. Time passed as stories got told. Jesus was a master storyteller. What them parables are all about. Spiritual truth wrapped in a story. I can picture Jesus with his twelve around a campfire or sitting in the shade of a green tree in Galilee, pointing out to the surrounding fields. Behold, the lilies of the field. Yep. Finest stories in the world to be reading. If you haven't picked up the Bible lately, open up to the storybooks of the Bible, like Genesis, Exodus, Esther, and the Gospels and the Book of Acts. Some real interest in reading and storytelling at its best. This is Daniel LeBoon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure Radio Show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is 
Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Hey, I've got such incredible news to tell you. Um, I just love Charlie McKinney and the whole staff out at Sophia Institute. And he grabbed uh, my first two books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and he, they just reissued it. It's republished. You can find it fresh on their website or at Amazon.com or at, at our, our own uh, site, DeepAdventure.com. Deep, in the way, uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, they're going to publish another book, uh, republish another one of my, my books soon, and then I've got a new book on the way. Uh, so uh, you can find all that at our bookstore or at the Sophia Institute uh, website or Amazon. And I also want to remind everybody, uh, we have – this uh, amazing uh, work that Patrick, Pat Gervais and I worked probably six or seven hundred hours on putting together uh, the Bears Man Cave, the new Bears Man Cave site, which like is a non-Facebook community site for for men, and the Bears School of Manliness, which is a three-year curriculum that's really ideal for uh, fathers to take their sons through. Any time you have a son that's of confirmation age or older, that Bears School of Manliness is a monthly curriculum with videos and written content and cool homilies from uh, Father Bryce Lundgren, the, the the cowboy priest, and just really great stuff that will grab your attention. But also uh, challenge you and t- you take a personal inventory each month of how you how you're handling each one of those areas of manliness so we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and become part of the man cave and join uh, bear school of manliness deepadventure.com will get you there we're talking with uh, fir- uh, sergeant first class jason goodman uh here in, here in hawaii jason how, did you did you had this event here in hawaii where the water wasn't that went bad in in the area where the, some of the military are and you've been here you were here in Waikiki Beach how did your family uh how did your family uh, handle all of that so just the moving down um I don't, I don't really know where to start we yeah when we had to evacuate the housing we live in because of the water contamination I think the kids loved the hotel uh I thought I wouldn't like all the people downtown but it was fun I really enjoyed it and I haven't felt overwhelmed by I tend to get overwhelmed with lots of people around me, but yeah, uh, I haven't. I don't know if it's an army thing, no, there's, but um, there's yeah, a great escape. Been. There's a great escape paddle out <laughs> into the ocean. Yeah, but it was right? cool. <laughs> it's cool bumping into you and your in your family here. So we want to hear talk story with us a little bit about uh, how you became where you are today. I know you lead a men's group that I've been fortunate to go and and, and talk with them. Uh, but tell us how does it how do, how does God make a Jason Goodman? <laughs> how does this happen? <laughs> go back go back and tell us uh, just give us a little yeah. bit of your personal journey. Yeah, lots of fire. <laughs> Piles and air, lots of er- lots of errors. That's for yeah, sure. learning um, the, we you and I learned the hard yeah. way, I guess. We did the school of hard knocks, right? I have a bachelor's degree in that that school. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I, I was raised Catholic till about eight or nine years old. I have a younger sister who's two years younger. And our whole upbringing, we were raised by babysitters. And uh. Uh, yeah, and my mom would work at a bar. My dad went to work at a meatpacking plant for 22 years. And uh, I, he would come to work there for that long. But yeah, I remember uh, we had to go to Catholic school for two years. And I say we had to because my parents divorced when I was nine. We went to live with my dad, who was Protestant, and that's kind of why they got divorced ultimately. Looking back on it, you know, you tend to see more things as you get older. (laughs) Um, And when they got divorced, we went to live with my dad, like I said, and my mom still had rights to our schooling for some reason. I don't understand that part of it, but she made him put us into Catholic school for two years, which looking back, I'm really glad that she did that because it helped form me. Mm. Um, Yeah, it was... And so we went there, fifth and sixth grade. I uh, got in trouble all the time because I was Protestant-minded because of my dad. So, in fact, I remember that I got in trouble at recess once in fifth grade, and I had to go talk to the nuns. They were a principal. And uh, you mean mother, and, mother superior? No, it was a sister. Sister. I had to go. See, I had to go see mother superior once. It's scary, dude. Oh it's no! Scary. Yeah. Oh, it's so scary. <laughs> they were like yelling at me for what I did, and I said, "Yeah, yeah." You know, answering, yeah, and they said, you will not say, yeah, you will address us as yes, sister. And I said, you are not my sister. You're going to hell. <gasps> oh, yeah, my gosh. Bad. Yeah, that was bad. And then they they, they make and you carry so, your M16 tied to you? After? No, that was the drill sergeant. Okay, go ahead. That was the drill sergeant. They tend to get mixed up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then, yeah, 
you know, fast forward, my dad, you know, got us. So you had been indoctrinated by your dad to think that all Catholics are going to hell. Yes, and not in a mean way at first. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 He wasn't mean about it, just what he had been taught. Um, Right. Misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fast forward to the Bible church that I ended up in, you know, 15, 20 years later as I grew up. hating Catholicism, thinking all Catholics are going to hell. Uh, I would tell them routinely, yeah, you, you know, you're not saved. You're not a Christian because you believe in a cult, a different Jesus, all these other horrible things. And then I met my wife in 2003. Obviously not my wife then, but <laughs> um, got to know her and we'd argue back and forth. In fact, we broke up twice because of uh, baby baptism and I think yeah. something else came up. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to go up. I had to go to an army school at that point, and my church was like, you know, why are you leaving? You need to be in church, and, you know, the elders are in charge, and you need to be teaching and, and becoming a, maybe becoming a pastor, Jason, you know? And I said, no, I, I really feel like I want to go to army training. You know, I need to change my military occupational specialty or my MOS. And so I picked surgical tech, and I left. But when I left, I told Sarah through, and I left out a lot of story, but, uh, I basically told her, I'm going to take your dumb Scott Hahn books and your stupid Carl Keating books, and I'm going to tear them apart and show you how you're wrong and they're wrong, and you need to be saved and become a Christian and leave that horror of Babylon and horrible stuff. And so we left. I, I left, actually. And as I went through the school, the 20-week school, I started reading and you know reading a book on Christianity, and it kept bringing up people like Tertullian and uh, St. Augustine. I didn't know him as St. Augustine. Who, who was that? Time, was that what, which book was that? Crossing the called, Tiber. No, it's called History of Christianity by Jose something. Okay. I think. Okay. I have it on Amazon. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So I started reading it. Keep, bringing up, the early, keep bringing up the early church fathers. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I talked to my pastor about it, and the first thing he said was, um, the first thing he said was, it sounds like you're becoming Catholic, and I wasn't at the time. I said, no, I'm not becoming Catholic. I just have lots of questions, and... So he kind of wrote me off at that point, and we argued back and forth, and then I read The Lamb's Supper by Scott Hahn, mm. and I've never been more convinced in my life. It started kind of falling it together and falling apart for me, because I mm-hmm. was becoming Catholic and didn't know it at the time, and so I came back completely convinced I love Sarah, I, I want to marry her, and asked her to marry, I, I was going to ask her to marry me a month later, but a week later I got deployment orders to go to Iraq at the time, for two years, as a truck driver which is not what, well, not what my job was. And so I told her I freaked out first. I was scared. I was a young, very immature specialist in the Army, uh, as you know previously from my lovely M16. And we, we talked, and, and so they were gonna leave, I was going to leave a week later for two years. And I loved her very much, and so I asked her to marry me. Both our families came together. We told our, the priest. I said, I want to return to the church. And so my first confession, it was eight hours long. Can we hear um, what it was? A, Can you tell us what you said? No, I'm just kidding. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> hey, you guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come back and talk with Jason Goodman. And in the third segment, he'll tell us all, the, the condensed version of all of his sins that he... <laughs> 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 no, we'll be right back with Jason Goodman. Your podcast is what, Jason? Uh, talking with a good man. Talking with a good man. You can find that at all of the podcast apps. We want to remind all you mama bears out there how much you mean to us. Uh, we know that you are our I, – I, it's your prayers that power our ministry, and uh, we, we really love and appreciate you. And we have a special place for you guys, you women, too, at deepadventure.com, uh, uh, the, the Mama Bears Mug Club. It's interesting how Mama Bears has kind of come into – Focus. There's the people call uh, women who are really involved in their their children's lives uh, in the area of school curriculum, mama bears. But we we called our our, our women that, that love our ministry the mama bears for, for quite a while, and and but you are fierce, just like those mama bears who want to defend their children, um, and we love you so much. So go to deepadventure.com and consider joining uh, our secret Facebook. Well, it's not even a Facebook community. Our non Facebook community, the Mama Bears Mug Club. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, 
Uh, this is Bear Wasnick coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Hey, you want to know something really stupid? Running with the bulls. That's stupid. I've dropped in on big waves. I've skydived. But, you know, running with the bulls, you have zero control over the rest of the people that are running with you and zero control over the 12 bulls. It's a very stupid idea. And it's so stupid that I actually did it twice. I used to go to France and surf in Biarritz, and we were just over the hills from the Pyrenees down to Pamplona, and we'd go down there and we'd make that run. It's very imprudent. It's the most probably one of the most imprudent things I've ever done. The virtue of prudence, though, is often misunderstood. People think of prudence as being timid, but nothing could be further from the truth. Prudence is really not needed if you're just going to sit on your couch and watch TV and yell at the evening news. Prudence is needed and really only needed when you want to do something bold. And if you're a Christian, God is calling you to do something bold. When I learned to fly an airplane, they used to give me this flight, this pre-flight checklist, and I'd go around the plane and I would make sure all these things were in order. And then I would get in the plane and make all certain all these things were in order. If you're going to do something like fly an airplane, you should be very prudent before you take off in that airplane. When you go fly, when you go to jump out of an airplane in a parachute, there's a certain way you test your parachute to make sure that it's packed correctly. And I live uh, part of the year in Cocoa Beach, Florida, where you can see the rockets being launched into space. Before those men flew to the moon, they, believe me, that was a very, very, very bold thing to do, but they were very prudent. They went through all their checklists. And we listen to the launch pattern on our, on our headsets when they're about to launch a rocket. You hear all these pre-checks they're doing. So prudence is the virtue that gives you uh, the boldness, the ability to be bold, and God is calling you to be bold. But prudence means making the right decision every time. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, are you looking for something that you can lead your sons through that will help them grow in manly virtue? Our new school of manliness provides you and your sons with 36 months of audio, video, and written lessons that includes a full toolbox with all of our Long Ride Home TV series, all the video versions of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, Bear's Daily Catechism in a Year video podcast, Pat Gervais, the Catholic Biker Daily Rosary, and a lot more. You can lead your sons of confirmation age and above through this manly school. Go to deepadventure.com and look into Bear's new school of manliness. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We have with us today um, Sergeant First Class Jason Goodman. He's uh, he lives here in Waikiki with his his beautiful family and and bride. And he, you've been telling us about your conversion. It's very interesting to me, Jason, that I know now you are uh, an apologist, and I understand why. Going through what you went through when you were in fifth and sixth grade with a father that was really didn't understand the Catholic faith, and so was so very, very anti-Catholic. Your mother was Catholic. A divorce kind of ensued because of that, and then you went to Bible school. You know, it's so funny how you go to a Bible. To, you, you talk to Christians, they go, well, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and it's like, what does that mean I'm not? I mean, I went to, I, I'm a Catholic. Um, I believe we're the ones that 
canonize the scripture. Um, we read more. We read more scripture at mass than you do. In a, in a month of, of readings at your church, we have more scriptures that are read at our Mass, and we read through almost the entire Bible in a three-year cycle. If you go to daily Mass, if you read the Liturgy of the Hour, and and so we love Scripture, it's just that we don't always carry around uh, the book. We, we have a disciplined pattern of reading through Psalms, the Old Testament, the letters, and and the Gospels. But I mean, it's just so, it's just so strange how misinformed and actually twisted uh, our beautiful Protestant brothers and sisters sometimes think of us. So you were faced this when you came back, when you suddenly you were, you had been studying uh, some of the writings uh, about from Scott Hahn and others about, you know, the early church fathers and the scriptures and about mass and, and things like that. And you went back and had a discussion with your Bible believing pastor had, had difficulty with it. And then suddenly now you're going to be deployed. And so carry on that, that story. It's cool. Yeah, uh, got deployment orders, told Sarah. Uh, we went to tell the priest, and he started crying, actually, because uh, he remember he told us that same exact thing happened to his mom and dad. Oh. So he said, you will be married in this church in 36 hours. Um, I said, I want to return to the church, not, not because of Sarah, but because it is the truth. It is the one true church. I was completely convinced. My family wrote me out. They thought I was nuts. Well, didn't, the Bi- didn't that Bible-believing church disown you? Oh yeah, I lost about 450 friends in a day. They were just, I was, I, my pastor told me, you were never saved, you were never a Christian, there's no hope for you, yeah. uh, you have left the faith. Um, that was tough, that was really hard, it still hurts uh, when I think about it. Uh, lost a lot of really good friends that wrote me off. Um, but but, but we, still, we, Christ, still look, yeah. we still look at those people. I mean, I went to Baylor University, it's a beautiful, beautiful university, and I think the, the, that, and there are a lot of Catholics that go there, um, and they're beautiful Christians. They're just misinformed about what we believe. Uh, they've been reading the wrong, they've been reading what other people say we believe instead of what, reading the catechism, and, uh, and the Catholic Church embraces them. I was interviewing Bishop Strickland the other day from Texas, and he said, there's only 5% Catholics in my diocese, but I'm the bishop for all believing Christians, and I, my, and I have care for all of the people in, in, in my area. Uh, if you're a Christian, you may not know it, but you're part of the Catholic Church because there is only one body of Christ. You may not be fully in communion with us, but we see you as our brothers and sisters, and even though you may not. And when if someone is converted to the Catholic Church uh, as a Baptist, as uh, you know, um, we don't say, okay, let's take you down and we're going to get you in here. We're going to rebaptize you because we believe there's just that one baptism uh, for repentance. Because you know why? Because we're a Bible-believing church. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, we don't see you as being separated from us, but we but you're not in full communion with us. And it, it's amazing how people that can be so loving and so beautiful and love God so much can have such a twisted understanding of the Catholic faith. And and our, and our job is to lovingly uh, share with them when the dialogue can open up. But you so you went through this experience of of uh, being married within 36 hours of of. Uh, uh, talking to the priest, and and then tell tell us what tell us what happened next. Well, we had a beautiful wedding in the church. Got married. Had uh, my first communion going back. I think that was your first communion. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Yes. First or yeah, second after yeah. I returned. Yeah. Praise God. And yeah, and we celebrated. We went out to eat. The restaurant we went to was Los Solo Mio in Omaha, Nebraska, and they put a whole thing together. Made a sign outside. You know, congratulations, sir. And Jason and then we went back to the hotel and I woke up the next morning and my commander called me and said hey is this specialist Goodman and I said yes hey ma'am I, I knew her and she said well I need to tell you something there's been a huge mistake you're actually not going now <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit action plan yes well we called her mom and dad who have stayed at the other end of the hotel thank goodness and uh, I, I she I heard her tell her mom and her dad in the background started sobbing and she's like, why oh. is dad crying? And yeah, her, her mom said, Tammy is her name. She said, well, your, your dad has been up all night long praying rosary after rosary after rosary and praying to, to get Jason out of the orders wow. uh, so he, he, he can stay with his daughter. I will and, tell you what, this woman that you married is, is very impressive in her, uh, her, when you meet her, you realize this is a woman that, uh, 
it has a lot of mana, as we say in Hawaii, em, em manao, um, uh, wisdom. She loves her man, uh, and, and but she, you can just see that it, she, if she makes a stand, she's going to make a stand. And so the two of you go so well together. You're both, there's a humility, but there's a real evident power, especially when the both of you are together. It's very impressive. And you have, how many children now do you guys have? We have, we have four. We have three and one in heaven. Uh, lost in 2013. Um, you're right, though. I want to say she is one of the most amazing women I've ever met in my life. And I mean, I'm not just saying that because I'm on camera. Uh, she does far, far more than I ever could do for our family. Um, try not to cry, actually. I was thinking about her. Um, and, and we have our moments where we just are just we do this, you know. And, yes. Uh, yeah. It, it, but it's yeah. mainly because of my pride. I say that. Yeah. Okay, so so you know, and it's true, and I'm so fortunate too, with Cindy. But I can just see a real beautiful, powerful, and not just a commitment to each other, to the family, but to the faith and to share the faith. Um, I know that you you, uh, you along along this path of becoming a Catholic. Then I understand why you became an apologist because you you your your people are converted to to a Catholicism for a lot of different reasons. I'm Ukrainian, okay, so I'm half Ukrainian. The whole Ukrainian nation was converted by Vladimir, em the emperor there in the Ukraine, around the year 500 or 600. And he, and he was converted uh, because of beauty. He sent em ambassadors out to say, should we become Jewish, should we become Muslim, should we become uh, Catholic? They no longer wanted to be uh, uh, pagans. And when the ambassadors came back and described how stern Islam and, and the Jewish religion was, uh, and then described the beauty of the Catholic Church, uh, of the the mass and and the singing and all of that, they said, "Well, we're going to become Catholic." So some people become Catholic, like Dr. Peter Kraft, because of beauty. Some yes. people become Catholic because of, of of what they see a woman like Mother Teresa do. Uh, but you became Catholic because of truth, and we know truth is a person. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." But you became Catholic because this because of this desire for truth. Uh, can I fast forward again for a moment here? How in the heck yeah, did you? Sure. How did you guys meet this Dallas Carter, this wonderful man of God here in Waikiki that we both know? You got twenty seconds to tell me. Twenty seconds through her sister Diana <laughs> and her my brother in law. Her Diana's husband Matt uh, ended up kind of coming together with him, and and then just took her from there. Here we are, four years later. It's the Steubenville connection, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've never been there, but yeah, Matt went to Steubenville, Diana did, yeah, and Dallas and all of them kind of went together yeah, at the yeah, same he, time. Yeah, he's a great yeah. guy, and he, he, he's, that's a, that's he's such, awesome. He's does such a great thing here in, in uh, for us here in, in in Oahu, and I know that he invited you to be to do your first apologetic the other day. Can you just tell us the topic, and then we'll come back, and we'll talk a story about that. Yeah, it was on Faith and Works. Faith and Works, what a powerful thing to talk about. We're talking with Sergeant First Class Jason Goodman. The name of your podcast is? Talking with a good man. And you call it that because his last name is Goodman. So that makes sense. This is Bear Wasnick. I'm talking with a good man. <laughs> yeah. And so when he, and, and do you ever interview good women? I could. Yeah. I, I actually did one. Yeah, yeah I do too. Uh, Mary Stella. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Uh, this is the Bear Wasnick Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, 
for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure Radio Show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, is a, a, is a very engaging book about the seven virtues. I, I do, I talk story about some of the people that, like Eddie Aikau here in, here in, here in Hawaii, a local hero, and uh, um, I do, I, 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 but we, we, the essence of the book is that I, we use narr- narrative and we also just use, um, we go to the catechism, but we're digging deep into the virtues and it's a great thing <coughs> Excuse me. To use with your men's group, women love the book too. Uh, there are women's groups that have used it, have, have have read it together, at in their book clubs, and and also we have uh, men's groups that use my book as uh, uh, to go to read together. It's uh, on, we have one group in Houston that uses it on Friday mornings, and other groups. And what you do is it's the chapters are five to six pages, so you can use them in one hour. But I really would love to see people using that, this at the dinner table to read through maybe half a chapter at a time and just talk story about about the virtues um, we need to get uh, that old that old movie back to the future we need to get back to the virtue and, uh, and it's men that need to lead their families into that and this is a great book that you can use to do that so deep adventure the way of heroic virtue just republished by Sophia Institute you can go to their website sophiainstitute.com or you can go to deepadventure.com and, and go to our web store and you can buy it there. Jason Goodman, Sergeant First Class Jason Goodman in the Army. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, Bear. It's so, it, you know, apologetics is so cool. We ended up our long ride home uh, TV shoot, the first one we did, at Catholic Answers in San Diego. We rode our motorcycles from Cocoa Beach to Catholic Answers and <clears throat> one of these days I just want to buy every one of their books and spend a year reading through all of them. There, I think there's about 40 of them, so maybe you could read one a week. And, oh, by the way, earlier you were talking about the early church fathers. I don't know, people watching on video. Behind me here, I have in the white and the, the red right there, <laughs> I have uh, uh, all of the writings of early church fathers. It's about a 24-volume set. And then next to them in brown is their commentaries on the entire Bible. So it's parsed out. Um, uh, like if you read Genesis, it's the writings from the different early church fathers on those scriptures so it's pretty cool and i know you love the early church fathers and you love uh uh oh and c.s lewis i think his his whole set stack of books is up. oh right next to the far side uh, all three volumes <laughs> of the far side is c.s lewis's yes. books <laughs> but anyway so uh, and i love father spitzer his books here his his five-part series of books there um but one of the things he talks about is truth uh, you know is is a desire the upward yearning for each human is for truth Tell us about the truth that you, you defended recently uh, when you did your first apologetics. I think Dallas Carter invited you to do apologetic, and uh, you did the compressed version, right? The condensed version of it. Now you got to do it even more condensed. Right, that was an hour and a half. Now I got to do five minutes. <laughs> well, yeah, I talked about faith and works, obviously, and how, as I used to believe in faith alone, it's sort of a it's some uh, the two are the two are synonymous i mean it doesn't when you say faith alone that doesn't make sense biblically because it even says in the bible it's not by faith alone it literally what, says that what does it say what is the rest of that trend th- that verse oh and in, in james 2 uh 24 ish somewhere around there it says it is it is so then you are saved by faith or by works and not by faith alone right so that's why and, that's why luther kicked it out of the bible that whole book for a while yes because it went yeah. contrary to his and, teaching, yeah, yeah, and Calvinists and Luther took over, and and that's what I was actually specifically a Calvinist uh, Protestant, and 
for a long time, it was faith alone in my mind. And God, God changed that in me through Sarah, her family, uh, the church fathers who never lied. Um, that's the thing that I got is my pastor would always say to me, antiquity doesn't equal orthodoxy. And it's true to a sense, like the Gnostics were antique, but, and they were wrong, but Catholicism goes back 2000 years to Jesus. And they, and they, and they refuted, and they refuted Gnosticism. Yes. And the, the monastics and the Manichaeans with Augustine and the Arians. Yeah. And it's, it's, if you even read the Bible with complete ignorance, you'll see in James two, it's, it says it's by faith and works. They go together. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when God calls you, he calls us first by faith. And we, when we answer that call, that is a work. Oh, that's so cool, dude. You know? That's so cool. Yeah. 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 If you answer anything you do in response to that faith call from God, that is a work. It, it's, you know, it's not by faith alone. It can't be. And the excuse then nobody you, would be saved. The excuse they used for you is when you then re denied that teaching, they said, then you were, then obviously you were never saved. That's how they get around that. Yeah. That, that it's like, yeah. well, if you have bad works, then I guess you weren't saved. So it's kind of like yeah. circular logic. Yeah, it is. It doesn't make sense. So and that's where I was. And so, yeah, that's what the talk was about. It was a conglomeration of not not just my thoughts, but many great men. Uh, uh, I can't remember some of them, but definitely Scott Hahn was in there. And uh, Peter Kraft just came together. And then I talked for an hour and a half about different things that they, uh, Pete, Peter Gray. Yeah. So th that's kind of where I was. And I just talked about simply that faith without works is dead. And here's why. Here's what the Bible says. Here's what many of all the church fathers said, going back to Jesus himself. It's very dangerous, I think, to tell people. I was at the beach once, and in uh, Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church sponsored the tandem surfing event I was surfing in, <clears throat> and 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 Christ for the Nation, uh, Surfers, I guess, I guess it's Surfers for the Nation, I forget what they're called, the Christian Surfers Association was there. And <clears throat> I heard them talking by their tent. They're great guys, and they go, go, go along the beach and ask everybody if they've been saved. And if they say yes, then just go on and go, go find someone else who can't answer that question yes. And it's like, so if you made a decision when you're eight years old for Christ, then it doesn't matter anymore. It just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You, can, you can live any way you want to, and you're saved. And, uh, it, and, and uh, I was listening in, in on this, you know, I was thinking, that's just— it's just so sad, and 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 then there was some comment about Catholics, and I'm standing right there. They know I'm a Christian. They guess I they they, they didn't know I was a Catholic, but it's but we but you know it, when you when you're um, when you're the, the the Catholic concept of the dignity of man, as opposed to Calvinism that says you know you're either chosen to be saved or you're not. It's predestination. There's no dignity there, and also you know the whole concept of when you. <clears throat> When you give your life to the Lord, there's that first step of purgation where you begin to cleanse yourself of some of the practices and the impurities where your life was. But it's an ongoing thing, and I've been re reading Dante's Divine Comedy, and, and the second set, set of those cant cantos is uh, on purgatory. Uh, and there's that, there is that also that teaching that once saved, always saved. As soon as you die, you go directly to heaven. It's like presto changeo, where the Catholic Church says, yeah, there, you may go directly to to heaven, but you may go to a part of heaven called paradise, or you might go to hell. But if you go to this place called purgatory, there is this, there is this, this beatific, you, you see God, and yet it's not presto change of all those selfish agendas and other things, the pride of life and all that. It doesn't go away in a heartbeat. That's still your choice. And so it, gradually, I think it's by, by, by looking at the Lord and seeing his beauty, there's such a fire of pain in your heart burning away that old selfishness, that old pride of life, and to where you find, to you gradually say, yes, 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 Lord, until your will is forever transformed. So even in purgatory, purgatory to me is one of the greatest expressions of God's respect for the dignity of man and his freedom of will to choose him. And it may be a gradual releasing of, the, of our clutching to our own ways, but we, we release because we see the beauty of God. Oh, and that you know you're going to heaven at that point. Yeah, you know you're going to. Actually, you're in thing. heaven, but you go to the to that. You go to the complete beatific vision. Yeah, we're yeah. so we're, we're so fortunate the depth that just the depth of of Catholic teaching. 
you know, and that uh, the yes. the other thing is is, and I know we only have a minute, but the other thing is, whole area. A lot of people come to the Lord too, to the Catholic Church too, because there there's no teaching authority. They ask one pastor this, another pastor that, and they get different answers yeah. wherever they go. That's one thing I love about the Catholic Church too. Just on the side is that you can go anywhere in the world to any church and get the same exact reading uh, in every mass, every Sunday, every day, and I think that's beautiful. Uh, coming together like that as a, as a group of believing people, truly believing people. Yeah, and, and in language, you know, we've been to we've been to yes. churches all over the world, and and it's like McDonald's of you know. I mean, it's like it's yeah. this, it's like Jim Gaffigan says, I haven't been to mass for a while. It's still going on, you know, and it's that universal teaching. We're all reading the same gospel, the same the same epistles. And, you know, one of the things we have on the new Bears Man Cave site. Is you there's a downloadable app that people get with all the with our toolbox, and in that toolbox is a link to the daily liturgy of the hour. We have the, the link to the to the catechism. We have a link to um, uh, the daily mass scriptures and readings for the day. So uh, so as Catholics, uh, we have this we have this teaching authority, and that's why every every day every weekday I teach out of the catechism. And people think, God, that guy is so smart, you know. Just because I can pronounce the big words there, you know, they they take me, they give me credit for reading Saint Augustine's words, you know. We've been talking with Jason Goodman, yeah. uh, Jason, what, uh, Sergeant First Class Jason Goodman. Where can they find you, Jason? Talking with a good man. Talking with a good man. Uh, he, uh, it's on Apple Podcasts or any podcast it's, platform. It's on all the podcasts. It's a great. It's a, you even got to have me me on there once. Uh, this is the Bear yeah. Wozniak adventure. We got to run the surface flat here in Waikiki, but we're going to go out for a catamaran sales ride with my uh, with my neighbor Jay, and uh, we'll be saying aloha to you next week with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you, aloha, aloha. <laughs> Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.